Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I have a little update for you on the uh, monster antenna, the 630 through 10 meter delta spiral. I think I'll call it a delta spiral because it's a delta shape and it spirals up. I was going to call it a delta helix and then I thought it's not really a helix. That's too, you know, like a piece of DNA. So delta spiral, the 630 through 10 meter antenna. Uh, I'm still waiting on my neighbor across the way to move so I can put up the uh, 500 foot wire in a straight run and start gathering data. But in the meantime, I uh, reached out to my friend Callum, DX Commander over there in the UK, to ask if he would mind modeling the antenna um, in his uh, in, 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 uh, MM, MMANGAL GAL or something. It, it's, it's all based on NEC on NEC, the uh, formulas. Uh, or the engine. But anyway, um, I asked him if he would model, the, uh, model it for me. And he said, sure. Uh, in fact, he not only modeled it for me, he sent me a video clip of him doing the modeling and his analysis of the antenna. And uh, said, well, okay, thank you very much. So here's Callum. Well, folks, uh, Kevin has sent me a challenge. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll draw this antenna. In, we'll use MMANA because it's got a really neat drawing system. And uh, you can see here that um, we've got about 15 meters, 50 foot, give or take, of wire between each of the masts. The masts are 30 foot high. There's 10 elements. It's one element, it's just coiled effect. It's a big, wide, long coil look. So if we think about it, we've got 10, 20, 30. So there's about 10 feet. Uh, now we'll start off a little bit off the floor because that's what his drawing suggests. So it's just coming up with a drawing methodology that will work. Okay, I think I've got it. Let me see. This is MMANA. So we're going to draw. Now, my methodology is such that this triangle's got to be ziggy zagged. So I think what we'll do is wire one will start off on the floor, go up to one meter, it's about three feet. Then we'll start off at one meter there and go to two there. Then we'll go from two there to three there to see if the look is about right. Oh yes, here's the beginning of it. Right, now I'm going to push this back. How far? Three metres. more element to draw from there to there hey now mmana is neat for this because we're gonna have that parallel or is that gonna go up as well if it is gonna go up then that should be one to make it go up in a spiral and there it is so we'll save this as kevin's Crazy antenna. And uh, now we need to lift it all back up to the ground. So how far down to the ground we go? Minus nine. So we'll lift it forward. Plus nine. Nine meters. So that should now be on the ground. And we can put our source at the beginning of the wire. So it's touching the ground. With MMANA, and it's touching the ground, it means that because he's got one ground radial, effectively it's on the ground. Okay, I'm going to ignore that Kevin's going to put some sort of um, ground rod, nine to one unan, and everything else. He, he could do a ground rod and a few radials, that's fine. The nine to one anon, I'm not interested in. 
What I'm interested in as an antenna designer is if assuming we can get a match to this, which I'm sure Kevin will, what's the far field pattern going to look like? What's it going to look like on top band on 0.63 kilohertz and so on and so forth? So we can go into our calculate, calculate button now. We can say we're going to make it out of copper wire. We're not going to add any height. We've got some ground. I'm suggesting there's 16 ground radials. We could just put in one there, but whatever. Because he's got a ground rod as well. And let's pretend it's just rained, right? I need to move you slightly there. There we are. And we'll start off on, well, top band. So that'll be, uh, say, on average, 1.9. So again, I'm not interested in SWR because Kevin's going to match that. I'm interested in the far field plot, which is weird as shit, right? Um, actually, it's quite interesting. That's what it looks like in a far field, you know, literally like that. It's quite a nice bubble, actually. However, what we are getting is um, very low gain, right? I would expect to see on a dipole about 10 dB more than this. However, it's extremely compact, okay? We got some twisting motion here, so we'll understand how that is. So there's our currents. That's interesting, we're getting some really severe currents right at the beginning near the feed point. You see that, these blue lines here? So X is over to our, X is to our east. So I would expect to get some gain over to the west. I'm not, as it so happens. Our gain is happening just north of east, okay? What would it be like on DX or very low gain off the horizon? Um, well, actually, better than a full-sized quarter wave to our northeast. Normally, I'd expect to see about minus five to minus six on a full-sized quarter wave. So that's the equivalent of 60... 40 metres high, 100 and something feet. But I'm actually doing better than that over to the northeast. And overall, I would say that's a pretty good DX antenna. Now, I know that 0.6, I'm not very good on the extremely low bands, 630 kilohertz. And what would I be expecting to see on... Um, <laughs> I'm going to get 6 to 1 SWR here. Uh, 0.63 megahertz. Can't believe it. So um, my far field pro plot is looking like a vertical. However, it's very low gain, which you would expect on 630 kilohertz. So at, let's say five degrees off the horizon, because Kevin's going to try and get me across the Atlantic. I'm I'm getting minus 9.8. Not bad at all. Let's just go up a bit because I know Kevin sometimes works on uh, 80 meters. So say 3.8, give or take, just to see what uh, it starts to look like. We're getting more of a bubble a bubble now. Not too bad. Right at the top, I'm seeing 3.4. I would expect to see on a dipole, 6, 7, something like that, and slightly more gain over to our east. And on the DX side of things, again, we're getting this slight gain, slightly better than a plain vertical over to our east, which is quite good. Over here, I'm getting minus 10, so I'm 4 dB down. 7.2, just for fun. Let's see what it does on 40 meters. Um, NVIS, fantastic. Straight up, look, 9.7 at the maximum. Again, I would expect to see 6, 7 dB in a dipole. If I show you the whole plot, see what it looks like? It's really interesting looking antenna. I like that a lot. And is there any DX potential? I don't know, let's have a look. Again, slight more gain to the hour. east, northeast, minus 8.2, 2 or 3 dB down on a plane vertical. And is there any interesting stuff that happens around 14.2, maybe some FT8, who knows? Far field plots. Well, we've got some strange bubble going on here. Any DX, sir? Uh, not really. Not really. Not bad going to the south, assuming our feed point is over at the east. And if we go all the way up, I won't bother showing you 15. Let's go up to 28 megahertz, just for fun. See what happens, assuming we can match it. Ta-da! Weird as hell. Five degrees. 
just to see is this any better than a plain vertical on 10. About the same there. Yeah, I would say 40 and 80 is looking pretty good. 160 will work and um, 630 kilohertz. I don't know. Kevin, that's more your bag than me. My name's Callum from DX Commander. Back to Kevin in the studio. Well, Callum, uh, what, what they would call over there is a gaff, I guess. What I call that was a brain fart. Uh, we put in 630 kilohertz for 630 meters. It's 474 kilohertz. He realized his gaff and asked me to apologize for him. Um, he did replot it at 474 kilohertz, and it was not much different at all, almost identical. So the plots that he got were fairly valid at that low frequency. Uh, so very, very interesting and very promising. I'm really looking forward to building it now. Uh, the models say that it should work. And uh, wow, a 630 meter resonant antenna in uh, less than 60 square feet of space. Ooh, this is kind of interesting, isn't it? I'm getting excited. The other interesting point uh, was his with his uh, plots was the 40 meter, um, a very, very, very strong NVIS antenna. Um, not quite like pointing a Yagi straight up, but uh, not too far off. So that's uh, that's an interesting little side effect too. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with it. Uh, now he modeled it um, direct. He didn't put any uh, like a, like I had it with a counter poison a nine to one. He he told the software that there was a field of uh, radials below it. Um, so the plot might change a little bit the way that I'm going to match it uh, to make it. Uh, come down to 50 ohms but speaking of that um, another viewer Andy uh, K9 AVT yes K9 AVT sent me these plots that he did as well and here is his far field plot and as you can see similar to Callum's results we got a nice bubble slightly directional in the uh, direction of the mass that has the feed point um, that's interesting but it's not overly directional just slightly uh, so that's his far field plot. Here is the rest of the data. And again, you can see that slightly directional characteristic there with the one lobe. Takeoff angles are good. Uh, and uh, he, he figured this at 475 kilohertz. Uh, he also figured it with radials and no ballon. And uh, the software says we're going to have a 1.7 to 1 SWR with nearly 50 ohms impedance without a ballon. Now again, he uh, told the software that he that there was a field of radials under it, so it's going to be different when I match it with a nine to one. Um, but nonetheless, these modeling results are extremely encouraging. Uh, it certainly looks like it's going to be a workable antenna, and I'm getting a little more excited. So just a little update for you with that. Um, thought you might find it useful and interesting. And uh, well, back to work. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.